when I would drop these videos, I would put stupid stuff like Jeremy Anderson speaks at Troy High School. Not realizing people ain't looking for that. I changed that sucker to top motivational youth speaker. In a week, a thousand views. Yeah, they'll figure out the name after oh, they watch it. They figure it out later. <laughs> I, I yeah. start thinking, what are teachers looking for? That's right, true. right, right. Best speak, best assembly speaker, best speaker for best uh, top speaker, best speaker. Like I used that stuff, yeah. but just kept it very generic. What they were typing in. My graduates from my school, being Forbes, bag drop, bag drop, <laughs> a mic drop, bag drop, bag drop. All right, guys, welcome back. EYL, this is going to be a special episode, something that I've been looking forward to for a while. So, Jeremy Anderson, I'll give the whole backstory of this. Um, I think the first time that we actually met was when we came to your house, right? Yep. Um, it was at one of Marcus' events. Okay. And then we planned that big lunch and whatever. Okay. Yeah, 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 so the, the, that the, was over. The notorious lunch. That was over a year ago <laughs> um, where... Yeah, he invited us to his house on like a Tuesday, I think, Monday or Tuesday, yeah. for lunch in yeah. Atlanta. And um, it was us. It was Spurgo, shout out to Trey, there. Marcus, Neo. Alex, Neo, yeah. Just, Just, Gooch. Gooch. Jason, yeah, Jason. Jay, yep. yeah, all the guys in Atlanta oh, um, pulled up and a beautiful house that you have. And, That's uh, an understatement. Yeah. His house is inspired, the Atlanta <laughs> houses. It was yeah, yeah, it was out felt the way. <laughs> beautiful house, but it was just good fellowship, yeah. camaraderie, really just summed up the experience of Atlanta, you know, mm-hmm. when people working together, um, people building together. You yeah. know, I Dave Shans was there. Yeah. Dave was there. Oh, yeah, for sure. I had lunch with him. Oh, yeah, yeah. Shans. Um, so that was like the first time that we actually got to build. Mm-hmm. And then from there, we've been able to develop a relationship. And he was gracious enough to MC. Invest Fest for yeah, us. Yeah. Legendary Invest Fest. He was so, an MC you know that. that call? Bonkers. I said, yo, you going to be available? I said, <laughs> yeah. I said, oh, we got you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that's not something that we took lightly because that was our first ever like event of that magnitude. Yeah. So having somebody to MC the event was something that was extremely important. That's like a quarterback of the team. Yeah. So, you know, we entrusted Jeremy with it. He yeah. did a great job. So Home run. Love. Jeremy Home run. is a world renowned speaker, mm-hmm. um, author as well, mm-hmm. um, and just a great guy. But he has been all over the world speaking mm-hmm. from Australia to Africa, mm-hmm. um, Middle East, yep, India, yep. India. Um, so he's been in the space for over a decade, 12 years, right? Yep. So this is going to be an interesting episode because, you know, public speaking, motivational speaking is one of these things that has been around for a long time, right. but people are just now starting to realize that there's actual business behind it. It's right. not just somebody just going up there just giving out quotes. Like right. it's actually a business behind <laughs> right. it. And, right, 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 right. and it's one of those things I like you because it's like, you know, it shows that anybody can do it because it's not like you was groomed to finish your whole life. Right. Right? You had some adversity early on. We'll talk yep. about that. Yep. But um, came and just doing it yep. and making a living for yourself. Um, company is killing it. Multi millions have been um, generated. Mm-hmm. Have an academy with mm-hmm. students, so we're going to get all of the information, all of the game. Yep. But um, first and foremost, thank you, John. I appreciate it. Man, thank you for having me, man. Oh, my dog. Yeah, thank you for having me. And let me just say, man, what an honor it was to get the call to host Invest Fest. You know what I'm saying? Because, bro, y'all know a lot of people. So when y'all called me, it was a no-brainer. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. And, and y'all know the conversation we had. It was just like, yo, it's done. Um, and I got to shout y'all out, man. You know, y'all student there in uh, South Africa is doing well. Uh, yeah, come on. Can I tell the people about it? Can I tell them about it? Yeah, you know. Right, so we'll, we'll get yeah. to me, but let me some, tell you. Some things we don't talk about, but go ahead, <laughs> right, Jeremy. Right, 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 right. <laughs> so when we had the luncheon, so, you know, our nonprofit is, is sponsoring 40 kids in South Africa. And so me and my wife personally sponsored 10. And so when we were having lunch, man, you guys, I, I'll never forget. Y'all was like, yo, you, oh, y'all, y'all sponsoring kids? Or y'all, y'all still want sponsors? And then y'all was like, babe, we want to sponsor one. It wasn't how much can we, it was just like, yo, we want to sponsor one. And so that student is doing well, uh, you know what I'm saying? And they would not be there if it wasn't for y'all, man. So respect for that. Appreciate so that. So when man. I got the call appreciate for Invest Fest, it was a no-brainer. Y'all know how we do. Uh, yeah, that's yeah. love, man. Yeah. I want to get into this, but let's back up. All right. So how did you get into the field of public speaking? So I think I, 
I always was running my mouth when I was in school and never realized I could really get paid for it. Um, and then, of course, the big homie, you know what I'm saying, E.T., hmm. seeing how he's emerged over the years, like I knew what was possible. But then, like most people, it was like, ah, but is that possible for me? And so, um, you know, I went through a lot of different adversities, I bumped my head, made a lot of mistakes. And when I finally got my mind right and my life together, I would get invitations here or there to speak. You know what I'm saying? A little youth program at this church. Or can you come to this little school after school program? And I started just speaking and just really sharing my story. I didn't even really understand the art behind it. Mm-hmm. I was like, yo, I got a message. I got a story. And I just started speaking and just really want to make an impact to spark something inside their minds. Mm-hmm. And then I looked up years later, long story short, and it emerged as a whole business. I was actually speaking kind of off and on for about two years, a little over two years. And then I had this incident, man, where I met this little red haired girl, man, and she changed my life. And I ended up quitting my job. Becoming a full time speaker. I'm talking about jump 10 toes in. Mm. And then my wife's so gangster. Y'all know Tracy. She jumped <laughs> in too. Yeah. And she quit her job. And then it was like, at this point now, it was like, yo, I got to sink or swim. Yeah. So in the early days before we, we, we get to the part where you're flourishing, what was that preparation like for giving, uh, speaking in public, right? Because a lot of people yeah. Yeah. haven't gotten to that point yet, but it's like, you know, they might have a gift or they think they do. What's that process like? What, what was the preparation like? Are we just saying, like, I'm going to freestyle when I got there, or I'm going to write down notes? Like, what was the process? Yeah, I'm going to give you game. So I'm going to say, for everybody that's watching right now, like, take notes. I'm going to give game, mm-hmm. right? First off, everybody has a gift and a story, and most people don't realize that. So the first thing you do when somebody is going to give you an opportunity to speak, you need to figure out, all right, what are the core values of the organization? What are some of their pain points? What are they struggling with? You know what I'm saying? Um, how can you add the most value? Then you want to ask questions like who's going to be in the audience? What are some di- di- different things that they're dealing with? Are they struggling with? If it's young people, if it's women, if it's adults, if it's corporate, like what are some of the challenges? Like what's going on inside their world? That way you can find a way to craft the best message, the best speech. Mm-hmm. Most people just be like, I'm just going to go and speak and share my story and have no clue who's in the audience. But I cracked the code. Like if you want to get invited over and over and over again, and if you want people to start recommending you for other folks, you got to figure out, okay, who's in the audience, what they got going on, what challenges, what are they dealing with? You know what I'm saying? Like what, what language do they use? What jargon? What are some of the pain points so you can add the most value? Mm-hmm. And that's really what I've always been on whenever I'm speaking. It's like, yo, how can I add the most value? Even today when we was outside, I told y'all like, yo, I want to add a ton of value. I want to give as much game as way as possible. Because there's something special there. You just put yourself in the best position. It's hard not to thrive mm. when you've got that kind of mindset. So that's the first thing I tell people. Get as much information so you can add as much value. What, what about the, the aspect of anxiety? Public speaking is something that is difficult for a lot of people. Mm-hmm. And at some point, maybe it was difficult for you. So how did you deal with that if you did? And what are like some things that people can do when it's like the first time they're speaking? It's like... So you oh, got man. yeah, you got two types of people that's going to be speaking, whether it's for a living or whether they're doing it for free or whatever, right? You got the person that has the gift of gab, so they can talk in front of, even if they don't know what they're talking about, they don't have a problem running their mouth. But then you got the person that's kind of shy. You know what I'm saying? And they say that 95% of humans are afraid of public speaking. So it's already a special type of individual that even has the, the courage to stand up in front of other people to speak. And those are the ones that's typically in this space. Now, I still have people that have amazing stories and got great insight that are kind of shy and nervous. And so we help them break out of that and remind them like they're authoritative figures in their space. You know what I'm mm-hmm. saying? I think when people realize that, it helps them come out that shell. Mm-hmm. We just had one student, you know what I'm saying, um, Carla out on the West Coast. She's got $7,000. She's in our program. Man, one speaking engagement. And she's just like, man, I was so nervous. I can't believe I got the contract. I'm like, now nah, I'm going to show you what to do when you take the stage. So, you know what I'm saying? Let's, let's, let's back up a little bit and yeah. go into the backstory because I know there was some adversity. Mm-hmm. Can you talk about that? Because I know you was in a dark place mm-hmm. and that helped you to where you are now. So for people that might not be familiar with your story, can you kind of give them a little background of your story? Yeah. So, you know, growing up, my biological father was never present in my life. Um, like a lot of people can relate to, I, I dealt with years of drug and alcohol abuse. I wasn't the type that could just have a drink and have a good time, but I was like on some wino stuff, you know what I'm saying? Repeated failure in school, ADHD, like I really struggled, you know what I'm saying? Pulling kick doors, stealing cars, like I literally was just out here just trying to get it. You wait, know wait, in Atlanta? No, nah, this Detroit? was in Alabama. 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 Yeah, yeah, so I went from Dallas, Texas to Atlanta, New Jersey, Alabama, then back to Atlanta. We moved around a lot when I was young. Mm. And I was just trying to get it. You know what I'm saying? And um, just caught up with the wrong crowd. Me and my boy. It's just knucklehead trying to figure things out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And so I had a lot of challenges. But I eventually hit the reset button. 
You know, so that's why I tell people all the time, like, I should be dead or in prison. I got some partners locked up right now. You know what I'm saying? Like, I should be there, but I got another chance. I got to experience that thing called grace. And so now I'm like, let me help other people not make the same mistake I made. Mm-hmm. So now I turn my pain into purpose. You know what I'm saying? Like, like they say, you're messing to a message. So now I let people know, like, most people want to run away from their story. Most people want to run away from their past. You know what I'm saying? Because they feel like, nah, that, that might be a liability. I'm like, no, nah, your past is an asset. You feel me? Like most people's like, no, my, my past is a liability. No, it's an asset. Like that can help propel you. That can help you build wealth. Mm-hmm. That can help you break change and curses and help other people and provide for yourself and help spark something. Once you figure it out, you hit the reset button. Now you tell other people how to figure it out. Yeah, and you can't you can't be ashamed of something that you went through because somebody can't use it against you if you embrace it. Mm-hmm. It's like Jay said, hope with that, hope that that's, hopefully you don't have to go through that. Right? Right? <laughs> yeah, yeah, like, your test becomes a testimony. That's it. Just yeah. Like that. So, all right. So, for being a public speaker, let's let's attack this one step at a time. What are the qualifications, if there are any qualifications, to become a public speaker? Can, can anybody be a public speaker? I feel anybody can be a public speaker. And I literally have every type of person that I work with in our community that are from different walks of life, black, white, Hispanic, young, old, some are teachers, some used to be pastors, some don't want to be a pastor, some are in between jobs, some drop out of college, and they all are experiencing success. It really just depends on what you got going on here and what you got going on inside here. Number one question I get is, do I got to go to a college and get a degree? And I'm like, you already got a degree. <laughs> I don't have people like, no, I ain't got, I'm like, no, you already got a degree. You got an associate's in abandonment. You have been abandoned. You got a bachelor's in brokenness. You feel me? Like the hard knock life. You feel me? Like you got a master's in misery. You got a doctrine in depression. Like there are some things you've gone through and that right there is what has prepared you. Mm -hmm. So now when you stand in front of people, you can speak with authority because you know how it feels to be in the bed and not want to get out the bed, not want to do nothing, not want to work out, not want to open the curtains. Like You know how that feels, but you got out of that. You're on the other side now. That is what has equipped you and prepared you to be able to speak. So I'm going to ask you a question on mm-hmm. how people actually can start making money. But before that, since there is, like you said, you don't have to go to school, but mm-hmm. I feel like you still have to hone your skills. Right? Absolutely. So what is, because like even for us, we have a podcast. So what, what people don't know is that before we actually had a podcast, Top of the Charts and all of that, is I had a um, public access show. Mm. So I didn't necessarily plan on doing this. But what I realized is that I did the public access show for almost two years. Mm. And at the time, my friend Mike, he didn't understand why I was doing it. He would be like, we should just do a YouTube because you can get paid on YouTube. And like, if you're going to do something, just start building a brand right now. Right. And I'm like, nah, A, it's not time yet. And B, I'm not ready yet. You mm-hmm. know what I'm saying? I got to actually hone my skills. Mm-hmm. And that was kind of like the minor leagues mm-hmm. for me, how I look at it. Like, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Where people were looking at it like, who wants to do a public access channel show? I never right. looked at it like that. I looked at it like a way to build relationships and a way to just get more comfortable having conversations in front of camera. So that helped me. So I say that to say, what are some ways that even before somebody could even think about making money, they could just get comfortable speaking publicly? Because like you said, it is a big fear and it is a skill set right. too. Right, right. So I tell people all the time that the best practice is like when you're really in front of somebody. So I tell all my students, like, make sure you get your heart right. Don't just do it just for the bag. The bag is great, but you got to really have a heart for people. So I tell all of them, get every single opportunity that will come your way. You call an organization and institutions, I would love to speak. I would love to volunteer my services. I would love to add value. It's only a matter of time before you start getting some of those engagements. Can you speak and give a speech in front of a mirror and do some stuff like that? Like, yes, you can do all of that, right? But when you're actually in front of people, like those free engagements, that's your practice ground. And that's how it was for me. There's no shortcuts to greatness. you got to be willing to put some work in. You know what I'm saying? And the more you do it, the more you get better when it comes to your flow, your articulation, your delivery, your style, your cadence, your posture, how you stand, how you deliver it. And then you get it filmed and you watch it. And now you can see, okay, what to do differently next time. So I tell people all the time, like, get in front of as many people, take every single opportunity that comes your way and watch the more opportunities that come your way. But that helps you perfect it. Yeah, I remember being in a speech class in college in uh, one of your assign- every assignment, every speech that you had to give, you had to get a v- VHS, which is like what they used to record on. Ooh, back in the day. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. <laughs> um, and you would have to record it and then you'd have to critique yourself. Mm-hmm. And then the teacher would have his critique and y'all have to match and have a meeting with that. Is that something that you practice or was one of the techniques like, hey, let me go watch some speakers 
take notes, like other mm-hmm. other things we can do mm-hmm. to help master and study the craft outside so, of just you know in the mirror and so, doing free engagements. So until you get opportunities to speak for free, then you got to study the craft. So that's when you look at my stuff up. You look up Inky Johnson. You look up. Eric Thomas, you know what I'm saying? Like you look up Les Brown, you look up these iconic speakers and you watch them. You know what I'm saying? You kind of get that in your spirit, get that in the energy, you know what I'm saying? And kind of see how they're moving and operating. Then when you get your opportunity, you can have your own voice. And it takes you a while sometimes to find your own voice, your own style. Um, but that is key. You know what I'm saying? So I'd say both and, not either or. Depending mm-hmm. on the opportunities. And I can always tell the people that study the game. I got people down now be like, bro, I be watching all your videos. I'm ready. I'm like, all right, let's go. But it's hit, it hit different, though, yeah. when it's actually on you and you got to sit in front of the people. Can you talk about that journey of finding your voice? Because like, you could study someone. And we were watching somebody the other night and uh, they were doing stand up and they reminded me of another comic. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, all right, you can tell they've studied that one. What's that journey like of you actually finding your own voice? Because you're watching people, you're right, studying, right. but you want to make it your unique self. So yeah, what's that's that a like? good point. So that can be actually very risky. Hey, Ernest, did you know that the black community has $2.7 trillion of spending power? Are you ready to see what you can do when you combine and recirculate our resources to expand the pool of black excellence? I know I'm ready. And that's why we've partnered with Greenwood, the in-demand black-owned digital banking platform. Greenwood's namesake was founded in 1906, built from the brilliance of black dreamers looking to create a self-sufficient community in the Greenwood district of Tulsa, Oklahoma, a.k.a. Black Wall Street. Today, Greenwood is a digital banking platform with the mission to strengthen the black dollar using the same community reinvestment strategies of the original Greenwood district. And it's powered by a best-in-class mobile app that allows you to bank from anywhere. So, earners. If you're ready to build a new legacy of black economic achievement, go to bankgreenwood.com slash EYL and sign up to be a part of the new Greenwood community. That's bankgreenwood.com slash EYL. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Head over there now. Right? Because, you know, you, it's like you hang out with your cousin a whole lot and you start, you start picking up jargon. You're not trying to. You just realize, like, man, I, or you might have somebody that might talk and say something. Yeah. You pick up some lingo. It's like, hey, you got that from me. You got that from Shada. You know what I'm saying? It's like, <laughs> yeah. that's weird. You know what I'm saying? That's how it was with me. And guess who it was? E.T. E. Bro, I've known E.T. for over 26 years. Like, he's family. Like, he's my daughter's godfather. Mm-hmm. And so, because I watched him for so much, you know, like, you just pick up certain things from Big Bro, not even realizing it. Mm-hmm. So, it took me to go through a journey of saying, you know what? Let me just try to be intentional. But there was a few years I was like, I'm not even watching Big Bro stuff no more. Jay, you seen that video? Nope. You know what I'm saying? Because we so connected, but yeah. I need to find my own voice and have my own style of delivery. And so everybody that's out here speaking, it's like you do want to watch others, but then you want to look in the mirror and say, okay, how do I deliver it? You know what I'm saying? How is my flow? How is my style? Like when I be speaking, I be very passionate, but sometimes I be goofy. Like, bro, I'm down to earth. You know what I'm saying? Like, but then I'm like, but yo, let me not run from that. That's me. I can be very passionate and I can say so funny and then get back very serious. You know what I'm saying? People be like, bro, he bipolar. Well, look, it's working. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's who I am. And so I feel like everybody has an opportunity to kind of decide like what, which path they're going to take. And I think the more research you do, the more you get closer and the more experience you have to really find your voice. I feel like um, there's also different types of public speaking. Yeah, absolutely. Um, where like some people, their public speaking is motivational. Right. Some people, their public speaking is more so just their journey. Right. And then whatever you get from it, Mm-hmm. And it's like, I'd say we do public speaking and probably based around the business department, right. education. Right. But how important is that to find your pocket of actually what you want to speak about? Yeah, and it really depends on your gift and, and your level of articulation and how you speak and deliver. Because there are some people that's like super passionate, super motivational, and they're going to get you fired up. I know a lot of people, you know what I'm saying? They, they ain't got that passion, but they got that depth. They got that knowledge. They're an expert in their field. So they can take the stage. They got the clicker and they're going to teach you. You know what I'm saying? They're going to mm-hmm. teach you whatever it is that they were booked to teach you. Mm-hmm. But, you know, but then you have those people that's like, yo, I'm just going to share with you my story. I don't really have a whole bunch of passion and I'm not about to break down no deep, you know what I'm saying, like um, data. But I'm about to share with you my story and my journey and tell you what you got to apply to do something different. So there are those different Areas and so if people gotta ask themselves like, am I naturally outgoing? Am I naturally a, a extrovert? Like, am I naturally passionate? You know, what I'm saying, do I go in the room and there's never a stranger? You know, what I'm saying, okay, well then that's one area you could take. But then you got some people that's like, yo, I'm not really, I'm actually kind of low key. I'm, I'm kind of an introvert. I'm kind of low key, but I got some knowledge. When I take the stage, I can speak for that. You know, what I'm saying, like people are going to pay you for two things. They're going to pay you uh, for the knowledge that you have and the problem you can solve. 
And then there's another tier of payment when you get to like celebrity icon status. Mm. I was told years ago, like they gonna pay you max twenty five hundred for like knowledge. At some point though, it's like they get to a point. It's like I gotta have you, and I'm willing to pay you whatever. So the goal is get to a point. You always got that passion. You already got that insight, that knowledge. Now how do you build up that brand? You know what I'm saying to get to a point where they willing to pay whatever to get you there. Would you recommend that everybody write a book before they want to start public speaking? No, no. But books do help because it's like a resume. Yeah, yeah. Books do help. You know what I'm saying? But I know people who are killing it right now that don't have a book. You know what I'm saying? I know somebody that's did five hundred thousand dollars that I work with that only has a children's book. <laughs> it's not even a personal story. But books do help because there is another level of credibility. You know what I'm saying? But nowadays, you know, it's like it's kind of it's easier now to become an author. You know, it's not as challenging as it was 10, 15, 20 years ago um, because you can kind of be like a self-published, you know what I'm saying, person. But it does help if you have a book and you can pull your story out of it. But I have people do vice versa. Mm-hmm. I got people that have books and, auth- and there are authors who say, man, I'm going to take my story and turn it into a speech. And I have people who have amazing stories that rock the stage and say, I'm going to take this now and turn this into a book. The sweet spot is when you have both. Because then when you get done with the gig, you do a book signing. Right. Yeah. 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 That's a whole other level. Meet and greets. Yeah. I'm trying to tell you. <laughs> yeah. so, so what's the process of preparing for that, for that speech? Maybe it's your first one. I mean, you said some key points. You said focus on tone, posture, mm-hmm. delivery. Mm-hmm. What are those other keys that you want to focus on? And what type of time it should be dedicated to it? Like when you're preparing for a speech, well, in the early stages, not right. now, but in the early stages, what was that type of preparation for you? Yeah, so I tell everybody you want to have, you know, three main elements. You want to have an intro and then the body of the speech. And more my intros, I, I pay homage and respect. You know, thank you for having me. You could have brought somebody else in. I thank you for allowing me to be the presenter. I always do that. Um, and then you give your story and key points, story and key points, story and key points throughout your whole presentation. That's after you've done the research. That's after you've talked to the people. You know who's in the audience. You know their pain points. You know what they're struggling with. Uh, you get all the information. Now it's like, okay, now I'm going to give you straight Game, I'm gonna give you straight insight, but I'm gonna pair it with my story. So, whenever I'm speaking for a school, a university, a corporate gig, like whenever I take the stage, I'm sharing bits and pieces of my story. But when I know who's in the audience, now I know what parts of my story will connect with you. Mm. There are some audiences, some stages I stand on, I'm not even talking about what I went through when I was young because they on some adult stuff. I talk about what I went through as an adult. I talk about what I went through in business. I talk about what I went through in marriage because that's like, okay, I can relate, I can connect with that. And so, and then you have an outro, you have a closing. And so I have like a signature closing I use for young people, you know what I'm saying, that, that kills it every single time. And then, um, and so I tell people to always have some type of closing. It might be a call and response, or it might be like a mantra or something you create, but always have a real strong close so you can have that powerful drop the mic moment. How important is it to get the crowd engaged, whether it be a joke, laughter, or like, you know, hey, this side, come on. Like, yeah. like you hear people do that a lot, like before they start, like how important is it to, engage the audience throughout the, the conversation. Yeah, I think for the I think off the rip it's important. Because they say that if you get the people to laugh, like yo, you got them. Yeah. So if you can have something fun to say, you know what I'm saying, at the very beginning, you know what I'm saying, to get them to laugh, like that's a win. Yeah, that's a win. And then there are some people, like I remember the last event uh, in Best Fest, you know what I'm saying? Like, well, I seen how Trap took the stage. He got the crowd hype on this side, got him hype on that side. You feed off of that energy. But I've been to some events. It's like, come on, come on, stand up on your feet, make some noise, talk no. to me. How you feeling? How you feeling? Crickets. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Who's the black guy? <laughs> I'm like, right, right. So I'm like, all right, they want the smoke. But even that, that's you got to fight through that though, too, oh, right? Sure. Yeah. It's like a, sure. it's like an artist performing, and if they're not vibing with you, you can't just leave the stage. You got to keep going. You got to right. keep going. So, what's the first steps to get a paid gig? Um, I have people that's getting paid to speak that don't even have websites yet. I'm big on websites. You can go to Wix, Squarespace, but you get a nice, clean website. Your message needs to be clear. What you stand for, the problems you can solve needs to be clear, right? High quality pictures, the best you can. Nowadays, you ain't got no excuse. If you have a photographer, cool. Your cousin, somebody got an iPhone 13 Pro. You know what I'm saying? Like, get you some decent pictures, high quality pictures, clear. That's good. Even if you don't have that, you can get you a nice EPK. You know what I'm saying? You can go to uh, Fiverr and have somebody put together EPK that has your bio, the bullet points of what you talk about. These are the type of things that you need to begin to get these opportunities. And then you go to the different places that are going to book you to speak, whether it's a corporation or it's a university or it's a church or a school. And you show up, you know what I'm saying? And you drop. I just talked to one of my guys. I went live with my guy, Nate, the other night. My man literally followed the play. He took some donuts, a dozen donuts for my Krispy Kreme or something. Went there with his EPK, 
dropped it off at the, his local school in his neighborhood and was like, hey, I'm from here. I live here. I'm also a motivational speaker. If I could never help you guys out, principal was like, oh my God, we were just meeting. We need a speaker. This is amazing. I may not get a gig. Mm -hmm. EBK, that's the... Electronic press kit. Okay, that's yeah, like a deck. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yep. Just like one sheet. You know one, what I'm saying? Sheet, yeah. And they might not even have those hyperlinks. They might not even have that. It might just literally just be a nice little PDF one sheet. Mm -hmm. But that stuff works. Because now they, it's like, yo, and you're not saying, hey, here's some donuts. Here's my information. Can you book me to speak? No. It's like, hey, this is what I do. I'm a national motivational speaker. We got to speak life. You know what I'm saying? I'm a national motivational speaker. Like, what can I do? If you ever need me, I'm here to serve your school and add value. Serve my community. And just so, let it go just like that. That's so, the start. That's one thing. When, when we start, we're doing free gigs, right? I've or, had some or, yeah. mm -hmm. or we're doing paid mm -hmm. gigs. And mm -hmm. if we are, if we're getting paid out the gate, mm -hmm. like, how do we know what the charge or is it what the actual person is offering for the, the, the speech itself? I'm going to give a hack. So when you first put, if you have a website, yeah. you put together your website, you want to know their name, their address, not their address, their name, their email, their number, point of contact, estimated budget of the speaker. That's, I knew I was already doing good. I was making six figures a year speaking. <laughs> when I put estimated budget of the speaker, it's almost like I instantly became a millionaire. So that's, the, that's on the booking form few, on your few, website. Few people have told us this um, from college speaking, I think even in so instead of, that's a common mistake people make, instead of asking, instead of telling somebody how much you charge, yeah. you say, what's your budget? What's your budget? Right? What did you put aside for a speaker? And if it's low, you say, okay, well, my start is three twenty five hundred. Okay, well, my starting rate is, is $5,000, you know, and then you wait. That silent pause can be a killer, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But it's yeah. like both parties is waiting to see who's going to fold. And sometimes they might say, hey, that's that's cool. I can work with it. Sometimes they might say, um, I, I just don't have it. Well, then you you still go ahead and you do what you got to do, especially when you first start. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? But that's, but that's what you do. You know what I'm saying? And then if you don't have a website just yet and people want to book you to speak, you ask them, okay, yeah, I'm available these days. I think I can work that out. What's your budget for a speaker? You let them tell you that. Right? I, got my, I got my first gig. Somebody booked, they put in the estimated budget speaker, they put two zero 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 zero. And they didn't put a comma anywhere. So my wife was like, oh, we got another another gig. I'll, I'll reach out. This is before we had Ebony, I, you know, who handles my travel and booking and stuff. So I was like, hey, boo, don't play. She was like, it's a typo. They put too many zeros. I was like, how you know? Maybe we broke through. We broke through. Ooh. She got on the phone with them. They were just like, yep, absolutely. Yep, our budget is $20,000. Can you guys work with that? I said, okay, that's when we own to something now. You know what I'm saying? And so, mm -hmm. but we if we had, we never put that. If they had been like, Jeremy, you know, how much is you? I would have been like 7500 But they told me they got 20000 Does that work with your budget? I was like, maybe you can work with that. <laughs> so <laughs> is, it, is, it, is it important for, to, to have a niche? Because I know some people only focus on colleges. Mm -hmm. Some people focus on like high schools. Mm -hmm. Some people focus only on, on corporate. Right. And they each have different budgets for different things. Mm -hmm. So would you say it's important to have a niche? Focus on that. Or do every try to do everything. So I tell people if they don't have a if they're not clear about their mission, the message, and their audience, because there are some people that's like, man, I could speak for schools, I could speak for colleges, and I could do corporate, you know what I'm saying? I could do other organizations. I'm not sure where my voice I tell them to date around. Before you marry this occupation, this field, like date around. You know what I'm saying? Like date around with a few different, you know, saying um, uh, um, um, uh, areas and see if you look up in a year and you had three corporate engagements, but 12 schools. Well, now, you know, that's where the bigger demand is. Like, don't let that don't let that go to money. I, there was a time in my life when I was I was speaking to eat. I don't speak to eat no more. I speak to feed now. I'm not going to let you know, I'm not going to let the, 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 the money, you know, what I'm saying move me. You know, what I'm saying it's the mission. I'm not going to let the profits motivate me. You know what I'm saying? It's more so the purpose. And so. I tell people all the time to figure it out. Now, when I first started, bro, I was doing everything. I wanted to eat. I saw E. I was like, yo, E, bro, you doing corporate? You also a pastor? And you in schools, universities, sports teams? I'm trying to do it all. And he told me, he was like, yeah, but if you go to my website, it's one main thing I'm pushing. It's one main thing I'm advocating for. I'm just getting these other things. Your gifts will make room for you. So he was like, you got to clean it up. So that's when I was like, man, okay. Because I had a tab that said corporate. I had a tab that said churches and a tab that said schools. So whatever you wanted, I'm your guy. I got whatever you need, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. But I was like a handyman. And he was like, yo, clean it up. And so I was like, God, I took out corporate. That don't come as easy. And it was like, all right, churches and schools. And I realized, like, I can reach way more people in the school space. Folks in the church, even if I travel and speak, and I'm your guest speaker, when I leave, pastor's still there. Ain't nobody coming to these schools like that. So I went all in with schools thinking schools didn't really have a budget. Thinking 
I literally thought, man, I ain't gonna make the money. I could have made it corporate, but it's not about the money. It's about these kids. It's about the sacrifice, making an impact. I was wrong though. Mm-hmm. High school, saying, high like, schools or colleges? I do high schools, middle schools, and universities. Yeah. Yep. So schools are unique because once you do a great job, you, they they book you again, mm-hmm. and sometimes they might have you as a quarterly speaker. So mm-hmm. how does that work? Do you just you have they have the budget and is the budget allocated for the year or is it mm-hmm. per each speech? How does that work? Do you like have long term contracts? Every, every school is different. Okay. You got some that want to put me on retainer. You got some that's like I just got one budget for this right here. Mm-hmm. Or if you build the relationships, I'm gonna get I'm gonna get your, I'm gonna get our, our learners other sauce on that. But if you build the relationships, they'll start calling you saying I got opportunities. Bro, I got a principal that hit me a few months ago. Uh, they hit Evan. He's like, Evan, I got five thousand uh, dollars. Evan's like, Jeremy, not really traveling right now. Girl, just have him do a, a little twenty minute video encouraging my teachers. I'm gonna mail y'all a check. She just saw she had leftover budget, but she was like, y'all my people. So I, I want you to get this before I spend it with anybody else. Let me get y'all the sauce on that. Let's yeah. do it. All right, all right, all right. Here's the sauce on that. So every single time I have a speaking engagement, before I get there, I want to have a conversation. I want to know the things we talked about. What are your pain points? What are you struggling with? Who's in the audience? You know what I'm saying? Like, like, what are you all looking? What's the theme for the event? I want to understand everything so I can add the most value. After that 10, 15 minute conversation, they really appreciate that. They're like, yo, most, because most people are not doing that. Most people just like, um, here's my story. Then when I show up, I show out. I lose my mind. I give them my all. And then I spend 30 minutes to an hour afterwards taking pictures, taking selfies, talking with people. They appreciate that connection. Then I do a follow up call. And I'm like, hey, is there anything I could have did differently? Did I meet your expectations or did I exceed your expectations? That's another touch point. Ain't nobody doing that. Then I send them a gift. I'll take 1% of the budget. So if this is a small gift, it's like maybe 10 grand. That's a hundred dollars. I'll send you a big old edible arrangement or something from a local bakery with a card that says, we hope these treats are as sweet as Jeremy's presentation. You know what I'm saying? They laugh. <laughs> But now they're eating. And it's a science. If I speak on Tuesday, I don't do anything on Wednesday. I know everybody, the organization is talking on Wednesday. Then I have the gift arrive on Thursday. And that, you know, that's another level of class. Like most people aren't expecting that. And then after I send the gift and I've had all those calls, then I'm going to send them a holiday card from my family. Not from the Jeremy Anderson group, not from the company, because that's professional. After you spend with me, I want it to be personal. You want to see my wife. You want to see my two kids. Seasons, greetings, you know what I'm saying? Happy New Year. That's that's personal there. Yeah. That right there, man, they man, let me tell you something. I kind of view it the way I view almost like my life. You ain't gonna find another lover like me. When they come to a speaker, I'm like, you ain't gonna find another speaker like me. Because not only am I gonna kill the stage, I'm gonna do these extra things that nobody else is doing. So when you do have a budget, yo, you about to come back to me. Yeah. And you're gonna live on my fridge for the holiday season. <laughs> oh, yeah, 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 no doubt, no doubt. Facts. So um I don't know if you use this site, but Lenny, we interviewed the college professors, Lenny and Jeff, shout out to them. Yep. And they they go around different colleges. And they were talking about this website where it was like kind of like, a, I guess like an open audition where it's like schools, like you can go. And you familiar with that? Mm-mm. Okay. Yeah, they were saying, I forget the name. I was trying to think. It was, but long story short, speaking, reaching out to colleges, are there any methods that you would recommend? I know obviously like you do like student union um, leadership, mm-hmm. going to student union leadership. But like, are there different like conventions where like, you know, a bunch of colleges may be present and you can kind of just like pitch to multiple colleges as opposed to just one offs. Yeah, there are those. I've been blessed to not even have to do that. Okay. They just they just come to me now. But there are these things called trio, you know, what I'm saying trio. So basically the government is just like, yo, we realize that with all of these state funded and major state and colleges, universities, that 80 percent of the first generation college students. In minority students, 80% of them are not going to be successful. So every state college university ha- and HBCUs have this these trio programs where they bring in speakers and they bring in programs to ensure that their students are more successful. Trio? It's called Trio. Yep. Mm-hmm. And it's called Upward Bound. It's like a whole bunch of different programs under the trio. It's like Trio, Upward Bound, Fresh Start, like all these different programs. But most people don't realize that. And it's not even because the universities just want to make sure the students are successful. It ain't even really that. They realize, man, the more successful these kids are, the more they stay in our school, the more money, money we money, get. Money, money, money. So now we take the money from the government and it's like, yo, if you're going to give it to these institutions, bring me in. Let me be the speaker. Let me speak life into these students. Make sure they showing up to class and handling their business. And then they write the check to us. 
What? And that right there is unlimited. I got a shot on Natasha Shabazz, man. She's got a $35,000 contract. She's killing it. And she's primarily trio. And she ain't really left the state of Ohio. I'm sitting here thinking, like, you're about to do six figures, and you ain't even got to leave the state. Like, it's possible. These resources are out there. People just really don't know how to tap into it. But that's a whole, that university is a whole nother wave. And now my name is out there so strong, they just kind of hit me, and it just sees what works with my schedule. Is it the same process for corporate? Like, you did you reach out, or you got to a point where, like, corporate so are looking at you like, we need that guy. We have to have him. We've heard of him. Mm-hmm. Somebody's referred them. Or yeah. was it like, I'm pitching to a corporate organization? All right. More sauce. My first corporate gig was a referral. One of my homeboys, Dewan, shout out to Dewan. He referred me to someone. Now, let, me, let me see this. My, big, my first big corporate gig where they really like, had a real big check. And I went there and I had the, my, my team with me. We filmed it. We documented it. We took testimonials. Took off from there. So now when anybody else is looking for me to speak corporate, they see that one video and they see all these other different people and half of them don't look like me saying, Jeremy was amazing. Best speech we had in years. We're so motivated. Our sales are going through the roof. I'm thinking like, man, you couldn't pay them to give a pair of testimonial. You know what I'm saying? And so that, that's one thing that you can do is really documenting when you get these opportunities. But in that corporate space is wide open. So I tell people all the time, it's really about relationships. The better relationships you can build with them, the better. And when you have those relationships, they'll give you referrals. Mm-hmm. Every single speaking engagement I had back in the day, I used to say, do you mind referring me to three other people? No one's going to say no unless you was just like trash. You know what I'm saying? But most people are going to say, absolutely. I don't mind referring you. And then they make their recommendation. I'm like, yo, can you send them an email and just blind copy me so I know it's done? Like, that's the wave. And that's what we do. Mm-hmm. And then those, it, it kind of becomes like a snowball effect. So your, your business is pretty much built off referrals. I would say I would say probably forty percent. People are still finding me. That's a whole nother hack. YouTube, bro. I let me tell you something. It's probably been nine years since I had to go to a school or somebody and say, "Hey, I would love for the opportunity to speak." I ain't did that in a long time. You know what I'm saying? I, I had at one point I had to start there to let them know I'm here because ain't nobody else gonna advocate for me. And you know what I'm saying? I ain't have no marketing firm. Like I gotta let them know I exist. I felt like I was the best cape secret in that space. So I felt like all the pain I went through, they need to know that I have something to share. So your, your marketing, what would you say your marketing today consists of? Social media? Yeah, but not even in the speaking space. I don't even market the speaking business no more. Hmm. It's just autopilot. I'm not even trying to brag, bro. Ain't nobody else doing the work I'm doing in the school space. Humbly, like respectfully. Like there's nobody else that's speaking in schools like I am. There's nobody else that has the volume. There's nobody else. I'm talking about like $200,000 a month, bro. There's nobody else that can demand what I'm demanding and be in every type of school, Catholic school, rural school in Wisconsin, inner city, Detroit, Chicago, Miami. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like every type of school, private school, like every type of school you could think of. I've been there. What was your key to really breaking down the doors of schools? YouTube. YouTube? Yeah. Like videos on YouTube? Videos on YouTube. Your past features. Yeah. Like when I interviews or just you speaking like me speaking. I literally, my first four speaking engagements, I had my guys, some of my homies, Javen, they would film me and, and, and capture footage, capture me walking into the school, capture some testimonials, put together a cool little vibe, put it on YouTube. Then you got to know the tags. You got to know the description. You got to know, you know, all those different things because people are looking for it. I don't create video. I'll create videos for students and young people, but I don't create it for them because they ain't looking for it. Young people ain't on that. Young people ain't on. Let me find some motivation. But their teachers are. Teachers are looking for motivation all day long. And at the end of every single one of my videos, when the video ends, it's all black. The music is still flowing with my website, JeremyAnderson.org, as the music slowly fades out. And so now teachers are like emailing, oh, my God, I couldn't get my kids to, to calm down and stop being rowdy. I played your video. They connected. I'm going to talk to my principal. And I'm just like, bet. And I was really just dropping these videos. I'm not even really smart like that. I was really just putting these videos out there because I really wanted to, to make an impact. I really wanted, you know what I'm saying, to share a message with these kids. Mm-hmm. But I realized, like, yo, I'm getting more engagement. Where'd you find me? YouTube, YouTube, YouTube. So I started leaning in. But I got so much content out there now, I hadn't even, I probably dropped three maybe motivational videos last year. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. So it was the, you were going to school. Filming the school content, put it on YouTube so more schools can be interested. Absolutely. Just like that. It's like they get a taste of it. Because yeah. they can come to a website and you can have great pictures, but they still might be like, but how do you, how do you speak? How do you flow? Like, what's your stories about? But when they see me speak, they see me flow. They see, you know what I'm saying, 700 black kids quiet in the auditorium. They're like, yo, 
Or if he can get them quiet like that and connect with their kids, he can connect with mine. That's a good strategy. Yeah. And it's niche, too. Because most people, I would assume, doing public speaking, just broad range public speaking, just motivational stuff. But you chose YouTube, which is the biggest platform, and to niche it down into schools. Mm-hmm. So teachers or administrators, when they're looking for any type of topic, keyword that you're typing on YouTube mm-hmm. for speeches, then you'll pop up high on the algorithm. Right. Because I'm assuming, especially at that time, there probably wasn't a lot of people. Right doing that just in the school, in a right. school space. And I'm going to give one more hat, right? Um, my guys, when I would drop these videos, I would put stupid stuff like Jeremy Anderson speaks at Troy High School. Not realizing people ain't looking for that. I got this video up for three months. They got 200 views. I changed that sucker to top motivational youth speaker in a week, a thousand views. Yeah, they'll figure out the name after oh, they watch it. They figure it out later. I, <laughs> yeah. I thought thinking, what are teachers looking for? What are people looking for? They're I, looking for inspired math students. Right, yeah. right, right. Best speak best assembly speaker. <laughs> high high, high yeah. school, middle uh, middle school, you know what I'm saying? Assembly speaker. You know what I'm saying? Like guest speaker for best uh, top speaker, best speaker. Like I use that stuff, yeah. but just kept it very generic, what they were typing in. And I just tagged, I probably got a dozen videos right now that got the same dog on tag, but different thumbnails. That's another thing. The thumbnail might have a picture of me that says, know your worth. Or it might have a picture of me that says, a video every student should watch. Or it might have a picture of me that says, you know what I'm saying, a heartfelt, powerful message. But the title that's in the YouTube algorithm connects with what they're looking for. Mm. And that's how we just killed it. And I told, and the next move for me is as we build out our Speakers Academy and all these more people, I want to put together a Speakers Bureau so now, if you're not going to book me, or if I'm not trying to leave for whatever price or don't work with my schedule, you can still stay here. You know what I'm saying? I want to put, you know what I'm saying, people on. Like, bro, y'all have put so many people on, like, with y'all's platform. It's like, yo, let's keep it right here within our nucleus. And so, yeah, YouTube has been a game changer, man. Yeah, so you were traveling the country, traveling the world, really. Mm-hmm. Starting to think, like, you're an artist. You must have a writer and all that. Right. At I'll this point, yeah, yeah, right? Like, I have that. These things must be there. I got to have my tea. Mm-hmm. Um, but obviously, the <laughs> pandemic... Has happened. Yeah. Oh, such a blessing. Yeah. That sounds weird though, right? But yeah, yeah, it was yeah. good to me. <laughs> right. So <laughs> let's, let's, let's talk about that because now you, we were limited in the sense that you couldn't travel. Mm-hmm. But it was actually a blessing. Yeah. Because now you don't have to travel. I don't. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I got me a nice little camera shut up at the crib. You know what I'm saying? MacBook Pro. And I go live Zoom just like that every single day. I just had a gig earlier today. Spoke for a national suicide prevention conference. There's going to be 10,000 people watching me live. I snapped on that, went upstairs, ate some Thai food, jumped in with the homies and came here. You know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. just like that. So to be able to still make that type of money, but still make that type of impact, I can reach, I couldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't try, you know how much taxing it is to speak five, six times a week? That's taxing on your body. I feel yeah. like the human really shouldn't even be on the airplane five, six days a week. Like, that's a lot even on your body in that elevation. But to go downstairs and cut that camera on, and I could be speaking with some basketball shorts on underneath, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, that's the best thing ever. And then I don't have to be away from the family. Now, there are, I still like being in front of people. I still like the crowd. I still like to, the connection. But the luxury of being able to do that and make that impact and income at the house, man, ain't nothing like it. I'm spoiled now, yeah. honestly. And since you're home, I, could, I want people to be really clear about this. The budget hasn't changed. Nah. The budget is the budget, the budget is and the, budget. The, the fact that I'm delivering the message and I'm giving the audience what you're asking yeah. for, mm-hmm. it stays the same. Yeah. And there are some schools, now if we in contract, it's definitely staying the same. Ain't mm-hmm. nobody going to call Ebony and say, hey, it's virtual now, and so since it's virtual, can you give us a discount? Like we are, That's a wrap. Mm-hmm. But there are some, I will say, there are some schools. I had one recently, five grand and 7,200 yesterday. You know what I'm saying? Like they might not have big budgets, mm. but they, you know, but it's like, I'll take that. And I'll st- I still do stuff for free. Mm-hmm. We got a whole school in, in Arizona that we sponsor with a group of kids that's struggling. It's heavy Hispanic population. Like we completely sponsor these kids. Like, so it's still, it's still the hard work too. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so I still do a lot of that for free, but on the flip end, this is like, if they don't have that budget, it's like, I'm at the house. I don't mind working with you. You know what I'm saying? But half the time, yes, that price don't change. I just The last part is because this is important. Yeah. You got a family. Yes. Doing all the traveling. Right. Obviously, you're, you're bringing on a lot of money for the family. But what's that balance like with being in a marriage? And I know your wife was working and eventually decided to not to work. What was that process like for you? Yeah, it was it, how I said it. it was good 
but it was hard. When the check would come in, my wife would be like, ah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> like, you know what I'm saying? It's, it's different. Yeah. But it was still hard because it's like, yo, she's just there with the kids. So then it got to the point I was like, yo, I'm established enough. I'm only taking gigs if I can fly in and fly right back. So now I'm like, no more overnight unless it's like a stupid amount. So we had that luxury. But after the pandemic, you know, it's like it kind of went away, but then start coming back. But I was, I was flying out. Saeed had just pulled up to pick me up. I'm about to go outside. My son grabs my leg. He's three. And starts crying. I say, Daddy, don't leave. Why are you leaving me? Oh, bro, that was a wrap. Mm. Bro, I, I, at that time, something shifted. And that's when I really owned that. You're going to have to pay me to leave my house. I'll do Zoom all day long. I'll snap. I got a great camera. Got a great Nikon with a great lens. I will go crazy. I might even cut some sexy lights on in the background. It's going to be an experience. If you want me to leave my career, you're going to have to pay me top dollar. Because mm. it didn't feel good for my... And, you know, and I could have been like, oh, he'll be okay. But no, nah, that, something like that hit me. And my daughter, she understands. So she's like, bye, daddy. So now it's like, if I do leave, I'm bringing my daughter with me. You know what I'm saying? From time to time. So, yeah, it works. Yeah. So you... You just, I wanted to ask you a few questions. The first question is, how do you know what to charge? Mm -hmm. and how do you know when it's time to up? The good. So th that's a good question. And you kind of asked me that earlier, but I didn't give you the full answer because I was kind of on that, the free board. I know my brother got me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. so, so I tell people the average fee of a, of a speaker is $2,500 to $5,000 if you're in the educational space. Same thing with, pretty much with university. That means you're not really popping. You know what I'm saying? You're just kind of an average speaker. You know what I'm saying? So I know people right now who are not, who don't have crazy stories, you know, no disrespect, but they're not like super talented, but they out here applying the stuff, right? And they're doing six figures a year, and which is actually easy. You only got to make $8,400 a month. That could be three speaking engagements for $3,000. That's very doable. That means you're not even speaking, not, not even getting 5000 If you just get three a month, that means not, that's not even one speaking engagement a week. You know what I'm saying? You're already making six figures. Like, that's doctor money. So I, so I tell people all the time, when you first start off, expect between $2,500 to $5,000. And, and I have a lot of people that's like, bro, that's life changing. I'm like, yeah, but there's levels to it. Like, when I'm never figuring out, the first time I got five grand, I was like, man, I could pay my mortgage up. You know what I'm saying? For the next couple of, you know what I'm saying, months, like, that thing felt good. I'm like, boo, we balled. And I realized, like, oh, this is, like, this, like, this is barely the tip of the iceberg. And then as you get more reps and the more you speak, you got to invest back in yourself. The biggest problem speakers make that I found is they making five and six and seven thousand dollars per gig, but then they they blowing it, they spending it, saving a little bit, and not putting it back in themselves. They're eating their seeds. I tell them, don't eat your seeds. Take the first few months and just put it back in yourself. Get you a videographer, somebody that can travel with you, more high quality pictures with you with kids, high fiving people, corporate, wherever, whatever field you want to speak in. Mm -hmm. More pictures, right? More videos, more testimonials. Now you look at your website, you have a demo reel where you have five, six different gigs, three, four different people giving you uh, 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 testimonials. Like it's the whole vibe now. Now you look like you really, really, really in demand. I tell people all the time, you can't make demands if you're not in demand. But the videos will do that. The videos will make people feel like, whoa, my man is out here getting busy. My man is out here doing, you know what I'm saying? He got the sauce or something. That's what I do, man. You know what I'm saying? I tell people all the time, like, put the videos together and then you can scale up and then you can say, all right, I'm going to go from 5,000 to 7,500. And shoot the resistance. If you have 50 50, where 50% of the people, it's like, all right, I work with that. 50% is like, they ain't got the budget. And you can keep that for a couple of months, a year. Then it's like, okay, now I'm going to go to 9,200. You know what I'm saying? You find the random numbers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. They kind of go from there. And then you can also tell when they're filling out the form, when they fill out that booking form. If you keep getting 200, 200, 500, 500, then obviously they're looking at you and they're like, okay, he's cool. But if they're getting 2500 1200 ah, oh, he's cool, but I'm not ready to pay top dollar. Well, that's some more things that you got to do within your website. Mm -hmm. But when Ebony first told, this probably about four or five years ago, she had first told a gig, um, Jeremy would be $10,000. They was like, oh, okay, great. That's so great. I thought he was so much more. I said, yo, like what? They were just like, look at this website. I just knew you were going to say 30000 Now, that's not the norm. Every university or school ain't going to think that way, right? But I tell people all the time that when you are getting some gigs, the best thing you can do is invest that back on yourself. And y'all know what it is. It's like, man, I got, I made some money in the stock market. It's like, I can go and blow or I can lean in. When the price drop, no, everybody else leaving. That's when I'm jumping in because mm -hmm. it's only a matter of time before it goes back up. And so that's what I do. So you just got an um, opportunity to speak in Australia. Yeah. 50,000, 50, right? 50 grand. Yeah. Talk, talk about that. How was that? And yeah. How did that come about? 
So I got a guy, I got a guy, um, I've never heard of him um, in Singapore who told who sits on this board for this international financial leadership conference. So remember what I said earlier, how I was doing corporate, I was doing schools and churches, and then he was like, yo, make a decision. And then I went all in with schools. And I just believe like your gifts will make room for you. Well, that's exactly what happened. They seen all these different types of videos. They saw, watch this, they saw my Your Worth video where I basically break down this dollar and say, if you ball the dollar up, if you tear it in half, if you stomp on it, it still has its value. So regardless of what you have going on in your life, regardless of what happens with you, you still got worth and value. That thing went viral. He saw that video, went to my website, sits on the board for this international uh, financial leadership conference. And they was like, yo, we want you to come in and uh, our budget is $50,000. You're going to be speaking one time, 45 minutes in front of 15,000 people. I'm thinking like, wow, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> to see just from content, like this stuff that I teach people, like I'm telling you, you just put that content out there. But you also got to have a good heart. Like I can't tell you, man, how many group homes, how many homeless shelters, how many detention centers I spoke at for free just because I saw people hurting. So I still believe in karma. You know what I'm saying? I still believe you can't be God-given. Like, I still believe if you do right by people, good things are going to come your way. Challenges are still going to come your way. I tell motivational speakers all the time, current or aspiring motivational speakers, okay, you want to be a speaker, I get it, but you're going through hard times. They're just like, why is this happening to me? It's to prepare you so that when you stand on stage, you have a depth and knowledge to speak from. So that when you stand in front of people, you really got something to say. You're not just up there kind of just flowing. So sometimes life is going to throw you some curveballs to show you how to hit that thing out the park. Then you're going to have a different type of sound. You're going to have a different type of stature. You know what I'm saying? You're going to have a different type of depth. And so, yeah, that's what I tell people. So that that, that thing that came my way for Australia, um, yeah, it was sweet. You know what I'm saying? So I'm looking forward to that and so many more. And who knows, you know, what that would do for the brand. This is And that's not even in my lane in a sense. Like, I could talk some finances. I could talk some wealth. I could talk investments. But... I'm heavy in that youth space on the underdogs. Like, I'm still an advocate for them. Yeah. I want to go to the universities with the cast that's there, and they feel like I ain't really supposed to be here. Before you drop out, I got something for you. I'm still trying to be in the trenches in these schools and let them know you still got worth and value. But to see that an international financial leadership conference want to pay this knucklehead, bro, with all the challenges I had, 50 bands, like, that thing crazy. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You said 40% of people that book you, book you again, right? Mm-hmm. What's, what's the deal with retaining the retention rate? Why is that important? Yeah, so for me, we just found that the, 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 when I come in, when I do that five-step process, I do that intro call to really get all the information. Um, I show up and show up, spend time afterwards taking pictures. How can I add more value? I follow up afterwards. I do that survey. Did I meet your expectations and see your expectations? When I send them a gift, I send them a holiday card. By the time I hit them with them five touch points, they're not going nowhere else, and they're constantly coming back to me. I just got booked one gig. $30,000. I asked Ebony, I said, Eb, how, how did that come about? She was like, you spoke at this school back in 2016. I said, you lying. <laughs> she said, yeah, the student graduated from the school, went to college, and now he's been working for this company for like a year or two. And he told the, gener- the VP and they want to bring you in. I'm like, what? This dude was a senior in high school in 2016. And now this thing came around full circle. It's crazy. But that's what happens when you really believe yeah, in yourself. I tell people all the time, how are you going to tell others to believe in themselves if you don't believe in yourself? So you got to be willing to go out here and go all in. And me and my wife, man, we quit our job. Like when I quit my job, like I had a little girl, she said she was going to commit suicide, but she heard my story. Yeah. But that hit my heart. Like she, I was like, she was, she was crying like after. She was like, you saved my life. You saved my life. You saved my life. I was thinking like, whoa, I went home and told my wife, I said, hey, boo. Like, I'm about to quit my job. Like, this new generation really need my story. All the pain I went through, it's really helping people. She's like, and at that time, Jewel had just been born. My daughter's nine now. She had just been born. I was speaking, but I wasn't full-time. She worked for the government. Healthcare, benefits, 401k. You already know, Skull. She's like, nope. You quit your job, I'm quit my job, too. She's like, nigga, you ain't finna be traveling around here, and I gotta sit here and raise our daughter by myself? We gonna have to figure this thing out together. I was like, yo, did you pray about that? I don't know what you want right now. That wasn't, you know what I'm saying? That was, because her salary could have covered the mortgage and the car note. She was like, bump that, we all in. You know what yeah. I'm saying? But, but great, what, what they say, what well, great risk comes great reward. So how did you get into the education space? Teaching, not speaking, but teaching. Yeah, so with the, so with the students, so whenever, I, so I would probably say out of all the work I do just in the school space, I still get to do some faith-based stuff. Still get to do some corporate stuff, but with everything within the school space, I'm probably 60, 40, 60% students, 40% teachers. 
all came from one principal. He heard me speak. He was like, bro, you got to work for our teachers, too. Can you come and speak to our teachers? I said, absolutely. Gave them some motivation, shared my story. I went to three schools for ninth grade. I kept failing and getting kicked out. So I told them how I went from three different schools for ninth grade, three years later, finally figuring out, graduating on time, and how I connected with teachers and how they connected with me. I realized, like, yo, I got something for teachers. And they just began to kind of speak more and more. And the more I talked to teachers, like you said, y'all had to do research. Y'all had to really engulf yourself in this space. Yeah. I started learning from other educators. Next thing I know, I wrote a next level teaching book. Had a whole bunch of different teachers read it, give me some critiques, teaching them how to connect with me. And now I'm, I'm booming. Yeah. August is my biggest month because it's convocation, beginning of the school year. Yeah. yeah. So that's what I'm thinking coming from that field. I know like a lot of times beyond just doing assemblies, they have people who come in through professional development. Yeah. And so I'm thinking like, is that something that, that mm-hmm. is on your books too? Like it's, you come in. Evolved. Yeah. You start the year it's off with evolved. this type of energy. It's yeah. like now you're the guy, not only in the school, mm-hmm. but principals talk, superintendents talk. Absolutely. And now it's like, oh, wait, we got this guy. You need to have him. To have your opening day, right. and you need to match your opening day and your superintendent's Listen, day. So now it's not even speeches anymore. It's like just staff, and you're the guy that's about that's to kick it. the year off. That's it. And they in there with t-shirts. Let me tell you something. I had oh man, so much I want to give you. All right, all right. So let me say this. I had one school I went to. I killed it. They was like, we want to bring you back. They brought me back. Killed that for that school. Somebody from the district was like, we want you to speak for our whole district. Yep. Killed that. Yep. Now I'm in front of eighty five different principals. Thousands of teachers, they like, yo, he got the juice. That opened up so many more opportunities. I spoke at like 12 of the schools. One school was like, yo, Jay, we want you to do a school takeover. They, you got next level of teaching, I mean, next level student shirts. Can you do some next level teaching shirts? This would be before I even dropped the teaching book. I said, for sure. By then I had the book come out. They ordered the next level teaching book. They ordered our next level students curriculum for every student. Then they ordered next level parent shirts. And we did a whole school takeover. And I'm looking at this like, this is crazy. And so people don't realize, it, I, I've got people that's building six figures a year, not even speaking. It's just a product they created. Mm-hmm. Can I get one more bar about how they can make more money during yeah, the pandemic? Let's do it, let's do it. So during the pandemic, my wife, she'd be in the spirit too. She told me right when the pandemic hit, she's like, you're not going to be traveling that much. You should do some virtual presentation. I'm like, virtual presentation? She's talking about like, I'm, she was like, no, you should prepackage it. So I looked at five things schools be struggling with for teachers because I'm big on professional development. Um, diversity, equity, and inclusion. I've recorded the 45 minute training on that. Um, school culture, implicit bias, Ooh. conquering COVID-19. And, uh, and one more thing I can't think of right now. Right. So I did five different presentations, right? Where all five of those present, all of my 45, 50 minutes max, put them on my website, had them nice and packaged, had some little graphics created for it for the low. And I said, each one of these is $2,000. Now I knew that would be a steal, they like, as opposed to paying eight, 10, 15, and him flying here and speaking, I could pay 2000 and get this knowledge. I said, Yep, and if you get all five, I'll give it all five, I'll give them to you for half off. That's only um, five grand. I mean, that's only, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I said, I said, if you get all five of them, it's only 10 grand. So they like, Yo, as opposed to $5,000 for one, you can give it to me half price, $10,000, and then we start booming. I told my team, I said, if you sell just four of those a month, that's just one package one a year. I mean, per week, that's like a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, that's a million dollars just like that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. so like, I'm realizing, like, man, if I just say I got this bundle package for ten thousand dollars, and some people can set it for five thousand dollars. You set the sucker for five thousand dollars, you sell that just twice a year. I mean, excuse me, twice a week. That's twenty thousand dollars a month. You know what I'm saying? Times twelve. That's almost a quarter million dollars. You never leave the house. You record it one time. And the, and the crazy part is that. If you add assessments to it, which I'm not sure if you do, mm-hmm. every year teachers have to do a certain training, mm-hmm. so, 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 social mm-hmm. bias, and it's like that becomes a professional development. So mm-hmm. now if you even got every teacher doing it, plus the assessments, mm-hmm. now you track it, and now you just that's just a worldwide thing. Well, you know what I mean? Because yeah. everybody has to do the same thing. Yeah. Well, not even I shouldn't say worldwide. Definitely the United States. In the state, in the, in we, the we have to have yeah. a certain amount of hours of professional development. Yeah. So. That's a that's a hell of a hack. Yeah, and yeah. I, I I do that. I, I recorded it one time. Yeah. And even if you could set the price at just five thousand dollars for all, just a thousand for each one, but it's a bundle package, and then you sell just one of those per week. I'm like, yo, that's how we make a killing. So let's talk about the next level academy. Um, what is it? What does it entail? Um, and like, what is the curriculum that you have built inside of it? Yeah, so I think I probably around 2018, I started having guys, you know, send me DMs, men, men and women, you know what I'm saying? Like, yo, can you mentor me? Can you coach me? You got a program? 
And for like two years, I just didn't have nothing for him. I was just locked in. I'm jumping on planes. I'm doing my thing. And my wife's like, yo, we got to build something out. And I just didn't have time. So when COVID hit, we was like, man, we got more time. We got time. So I said, I brought my whole team in. We got a whole staff. And we said, okay, let's map out the business. Let's reverse engineer this from everything from module one. It's like 40 hours of, of video lessons and content. It's like, okay, how do I put together the perfect speech? How do I build out the keynote? How do I know what audience? How to how connect with them? How do I build out the brand? How do I get the gigs, the templates, the emails? Like everything that we've learned that we've done, we put all within this course. Then we got like a private Facebook community where we have different, you know, saying events and things like that's going on. And our people are hosting events together, you know what I'm saying? And then we have calls where we have calls where you can actually come in on, on Sundays and it's like rep calls. So it's like, all right, you got 15 minutes to do a TED talk. And then myself or some other coaches will kind of give you some critiques. You know what I'm saying? So we have that. And then we have the, the Sundays with me where I am answering your questions. Hey, Jeremy, I got a contract here. And it's on Zoom. So they can see me. I can see them. I got a contract here. Um, this is coming up for the school. What advice would you give me here? So it's really a three part. It's like you got the community. Then you got the calls on Sunday. And then you got the course itself. That maps out everything you need from A to Z to become a successful motivational speaker. Everything I learned over the years from the very beginning, I put into this course and, uh, and people are winning and they get, they get crazy results. And my goal, I'm like, I need a hundred people that can make more than me speaking. Mm. Cause now I got other businesses. I took the, the wealth we built from speaking and got with Alex. Shout out to good energy. Yeah, man, we, we got a bunch we, of trucks on the road. You first met you was just getting the truck. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So now we've got that. We got the, Podcast, clothing lines, you know what I'm saying, nonprofit. We started another ads agency with, with ET and the squad. It's just like a lot of different things going on because as this money is coming in, you know, there's only so much stuff you can buy. It's like, okay, how do I multiply? How can I duplicate it? You know what I'm saying? Let me get some more crypto. You know what I'm saying? Like, let me make some more investment. Let me get into real estate. And so that's been, uh, that's been the wave. So now I'm showing people how they can take their message and monetize it, how they can live a life of purpose but make some really good profit. You know what I'm saying? You can make a whole bunch of income and impact at the same time. How many, how many students are inside, inside of the, the community? We got 700 people nice. in our community getting busy. And honestly, I can't. Th- I was talking to Marcus earlier. I told Marcus, too. I was like, hey, bro, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now. I'm going to tell the guys. You know, I, like, I know he's killing it when it comes to the credit and all the other spaces. I can't think of no other profession where you can make this kind of money in a small amount of time and make that massive impact. But when I get off stage and folks are crying, people are like, bro, your story touched me and connected with me. It changed my life. And I get the emails when I read the DMs. And I'm like, man, I made that type of impact. It's almost criminal that I get paid for. You know what I'm saying? But that's why I tell people, like, you got to have your heart pure. Like, don't get in it just for the money. You need to get in because you care about people. You got to really honor the craft. You know what I'm saying? And then you can be blessed with those resources. But yeah, that's what we have in the community. This is a three part tour. Yeah. And it's one of these things, like I always say, like, you know, this is a new economy. Yeah. And there's so many different ways to make money now. And the vast majority of them is still not really taught in school, like right. college and stuff like that. So it's like, you know, to be a public speaker, I don't know if they have public speaking classes in universities, but it's not like that. Like I'm a communications major. Right. So I study communications, but it's generic information. Right. It's not like modern information of like putting together a deck and how to get booked and, right. you know, all of the stuff that we're talking about. Right. I know firsthand and I teaching that in the vast majority of colleges because, like I said, I'm actually a communications major. I didn't learn any of that stuff. I realized what it was. I switched it over to social work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I, didn't, I, didn't, I didn't learn any of that stuff. So it's like for a fraction of the course of going to college, you can actually learn about, you know, trucking or vending machines or how to be a public right. speaker. And that's the, that's the beautiful part of, you know, the educational space right. is that you can actually fast track your learning not from theory, from actually people that's actually doing it in right. real life. And that's, that's my biggest thing. There are so many people, especially when you go into, you know, the, the, the college, universities, you got people who are teaching classes and they ain't never really went through nothing. They ain't go through no uh, uh, recession or, or no, um, no uh, pandemic. Like they ain't go through no struggles. They ain't had to like figure things out in different, you know what I'm saying? With different presidents, different things happening in the country. Like, but you got people like a lot of the names you mentioned who have been there, done that and have been able to grow and thrive and build out something really special that really do know what they're talking about and really do care. Mm. I probably they, they call me the community, Mr. Over Deliver. That's the hashtag they use. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm like, yo, as long as I keep over delivering and I keep adding maximum value, they're going to get the best results and we're going to change the world together. What's the most successful story that one of your students had? 
<clears throat> Chris, Chris Singleton. I hope you don't mind me sharing it, but he's going to do, I hope you don't mind, I'm going to share it anyway. He's going to do a half a million. Mm. He's not even 30 yet. Mm. I got a dozen other people easily doing six figures. Easy. You know what I'm saying? Are like, our most focused in the school system or? Mm, probably 70% of them. I would say when I look at our whole community, 70% of the people in our community are in the school space. But then you got something that's like, nope, I'm a corporate or I'm in sports teams. Maybe they play pro ball and now retired. I got a bunch of retired NFL, you know, football players in our community. I even had a few of them do an event. Like my man Jeremiah Brown, me and Inky did an event recently for a school. It was an NIL project. We had him speak. So I got different people in different places. Some are faith-based, women empowerment, that type of thing, 30%. But I'd probably say 65%, 70% are in their use. Now, that the school system is booming. I can speak from first-hand experience. I got paid like $12,000 years ago Yeah, for like six hours of work. And then another time I got paid a couple thousand dollars. And that was they, they used to have a program called uh, My Brother's Keeper, mm, which is yeah. um, President Obama. Yeah, I've done Remember a lot that? of those. Yeah, President <laughs> Obama yeah. put the initiative. Where'd you come to speak at, man? <laughs> <laughs> Pres- you know Pres- <laughs> we'll talk about that later. <laughs> yeah, President Obama put a program called My Brother's Keeper in place, and it was millions of dollars that was put in, like, different school districts all across the country, like, to target young men of color, yeah. African-American men. And... Um, the problem is that a lot, and you, the vendors, so like let's say the school had like $200,000. Mm-hmm. The first priority they had to spend it were like African American vendors. Mm-hmm. But a lot of them couldn't even find vendors. But because A, a lot of people didn't even know about it. Mm-hmm. And then, so what happened is they started spending money with outside vendors and stuff like that because they had to spend the money. Right. So, like when I had approached the school and um, I was giving a presentation of what I could do this down the third, and I'm like, um, they're like, so how much you think that's gonna cost? And I'm like, Twenty thousand, and and they was like, oh, that's a lot, and that's a lot, <laughs> like that's a lot. They like, yo, um, they, I never forget. So we kind of negotiated it down to to um to twelve thousand, and it was for it came out to like six hours. No, it came out to like 12 hours, but it only got cut down to six hours that had to actually work. So they're like, that's a thousand dollars an hour. Like we don't even, it's like, um, it's like, we don't even pay. They said, I forgot what they, they didn't say teachers. They like said superintendent. Yeah. It was like, we don't even pay like top teacher. I said, well, I'm not a teacher. Mm, all right. I'm just being honest. Right. This is, right. this is my fee. But I, they ended up paying it. So I know that the school system has money because I actually got paid from a school system before. And when I got paid from the school system, I realized, like, damn. So I started doing the research. In New York City alone, I think they have, like, $50 million mm. every single year that goes to outside vendors. All kinds of stuff. Yeah. Stuff that they teach kids how to, like, cook after school programs. Mm-hmm. And it's just, like, we never even think about right. this. But the school right. system, because everybody's looking like school systems are strapped. Right. There's a lot of it is just mismanagement of money, yeah. but they have a lot of money. Yeah, you got to know the language. That's yeah. one thing we put in our course is the language to use. SEL, PBIS, Title One. Like, there's a language you already know. You know, you know, I, know I know PBIS, man. <laughs> yeah, I got the. We was giving out. It's just that positive reinforcement. How are we going to do it? What's the strategies for it? You right. know what I mean, no, all that's part of it. I man. can show you the screenshots. I put together a PBISSchools.org. If you go to PBISSchools.org, that's our website. It's almost like, what do you call it? Like, not a clone website, but it's like, you don't really know who's behind it. Yeah. I'm on there almost like the spokesperson. And it's and just got a gig. Every $10, school. $10, that's what I said. Every school. No. Every school has it. The school system it has to be incorporated. The school system, system like is that. big. Yeah, that's, what you said is key, too. A lot of people don't even know that. You said there's, there's a, a, like a vendor list, but like a lot of people don't know how to even get on that vendor list. Mm-hmm. So, like, one of the things you got to, if, if you're in New York City specifically, is like, if you know assistant principal, if you know a principal, just ask them and, and they can give you the information because they got to recommend you first. Absolutely. But like if you're a public speaker, mm-hmm. do, that's the best way to get on the right. list. So now when they look through the categories of what they're looking for, who they want, yeah. or if it's an after school program or a public speaker, there you go. And they can actually see how many times you've been booked. Oh, he's free. She's free there. Yeah. We can grab you. You know how impressed they're going to be? The first question they're going to ask you when you call to reach out, are you a vendor? When you say yes, they're, they're used to people saying no. Yeah. They're like, oh, oh, really? Oh, well. Oh, well, okay. What was your name again? <laughs> yeah. That's the first thing. They didn't miss your name. They didn't miss Rashad. They're like, uh, okay, you're the Are you, oh, what was your name again? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, that makes a bigger connection for sure. Yeah. yeah. All right. So, yeah, like I said, I, I know firsthand the value of this because I actually benefited from it. And um, I also know the firsthand value of actually investing in your education mm-hmm. from my firsthand experience. I invest in courses like stock courses and stuff like that. Options. I got an options course a while back just to kind of accelerate my knowledge in the space 
and not have to watch a thousand YouTube videos and kind of like dissect them. So um, I think what you're doing is great with the Next Level yeah. Academy. I Appreciate know it. I know that you know people have achieved success, and it's like anything, right? Like you put you get out of it what you put into it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but it's always good to have support, a community, and like in a sense mentorship from somebody yeah. that's actually done it, yeah. like been where you want to go. Right. Um, so. In true EYL fashion, anybody that comes on the platform, we always ask them, you know, if they would honor us by giving us a special discount for our earners. Mm -hmm. Um, And you were happy to oblige Mm -hmm. to that. So Mm -hmm. thank you for that. So Jeremy has the Next Level Speakers Academy, but um, we're going to do a special $500 off Mm -hmm. for anybody that is listening to this podcast or watching this podcast on YouTube. And that's the website is going to be nextleveleyl.com so nextleveleyl.com we'll put the link in the description of this video also the link in the apple and spotify and um, you know you can go and you can get five hundred dollars off only going to be on that website that's going to be an exclusive offer for anybody that's listening or watching the podcast and if you want to invest in your education take the steps to actually reaching you know level of financial freedom and even bigger than that just getting your voice out there because i think that that's probably even more beneficial um, cause you never know where that can go and who it could impact. Um, if you want to learn, then, you know, you can go to that website. Once again, it's next level and that is $500 off special promo code only on that website. So thank you for that. Appreciate Absolutely. it. Appreciate Absolutely. you, my brother. Appreciate it. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Before we go, I got a question for you. Yeah. Um, obviously we know Dr. King had the, I have a dream speech, yeah. powerful speech, impactful speech. If you had to think of one, that people are going to and should remember you for, and it could be most impactful, the highest paid one. Right. What speech would it be? What speech comes to mind? Yep, uh, Columbus, Georgia. I went to the school, 800 students in the audience, um, and the principal wanted me to do something special, but only the males. And so I asked him, I said, by a show of hands, how many of you don't have your father in your life? And no lie, bro, out of 800 young black male students, 500 hands went up. Mm. And that just, my heart, bro. And I went there and I began to talk about, you know, the absence of my biological father and how they made me feel and the mistakes I made, you know what I'm saying? And then I began to talk about their worth and their value and I just snapped. And afterwards, I literally sat on stage for probably an hour and a half and one by one by one, students would come up. Where I was on stage, the curtain was right here and I was kind of, and after the first one broke in tears and he was one of the, he was like one of the wide receivers for the football team. You know what I'm saying? So he didn't want He was like, man, I can't do this shit. You know what I'm saying? Like I, he was struggling. I pulled him around the curtain. He broke down crying. And then I, I dapped him up. I poured into him. And then the next one came. And I said that for an hour and a half and just, just to embrace. You know what I'm saying? Like just to embrace them, just to hug them, just to hold them, just to let them know like, yo, I see you. And, and half of them was in tears. Some of them was like, that's some real shit. You know what I'm saying? It was cool. Yeah. But the other half was like really in their heart, because they ain't never heard that. You know what I'm saying? They ain't never heard another black man say, bro, I love you. Even though we're not tired like that, we still connected. There's great things inside you. So I've got a ton of stories, but that one right there was a moment at an event when I realized, like, and I always knew it was bigger than me, but those are the type of things that fuel me. Because as powerful as that was, and there's 132,000 schools in America. As dominant as I am in this space, I ain't even scratched the surface. That's why we built the Speakers Academy. I want to have a community of speakers that can go out here and get it, go out here and make impact, go out here and bless the people, go out here and change lives. Like, that's what it's all about. What y'all are doing for the culture, bro, is different. That's why y'all show up to Egypt. That's why y'all show up to different countries and you got flocks and flocks and hundreds and thousands of people that want to connect with you because what y'all are providing to the culture. You know what I'm saying? What you're doing for our community. People know, man, what's possible. Like, y'all are opening up their eyes. Like, you know what I'm saying? This is like something even different from the Harlem Renaissance. This is something different from Black Wall Street. This is digital now. We can go to our phones. Y'all got hundreds and hundreds of videos. You know what I'm saying? Like so much content out here. And so what you all are doing in that space of financial literacy, I'm like, man, every person with a story, every person that got a passion, every person that has a message, I'm going to do my part to help you go out here and share it with the world. And that moment, 500 hands raised, but that thing messed me up. And that's when I knew like this ain't a career it's any occupation. This is a calling. No, I appreciate Amen. that, brother. Yeah, man. Powerful, man. insightful. How can the people contact you? Website, any last words, social media handle, yeah. any last words you want to give yeah, to the people? Yeah, appreciate it, man. Uh, 
Instagram is one Jeremy Anderson. It's pretty easy to find. You type in at one Jeremy Anderson, J E R E M Y, it pops right up. Website Jeremy Anderson. Uh, dot org. You want to see my stuff on YouTube? Just type my name in. It's there. Yeah. yeah. Troy, housekeeping items. Yeah. Shout out to Jeremy Anderson and shout out to all the students in South Africa that you are yeah. helping to change their lives. Um, we look forward as the earning leisure to continue in that effort with you. Also, shout out to you and shout out to all our earners on uh, uh, EYL University. Shout out to all our Patreon members. And shout out to the entire merch team and everybody, our trucking team, everybody that's in- involved with the EYL universe. We greatly appreciate you. And love is love. Yeah. Yes. Thank you guys for rocking with us. Yeah. We'll see you next week. Peace. Peace. My graduates from my school being Forbes. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs> a mic drop. Backdrop. Backdrop. <laughs>